So we, today we continue on through the octave of the epiphany, and of course my favorite liturgical times of the year. And with that, though, there come kind of epiphany feasts that occur within that. And you only kind of discover them the more deeply you dig into the, the liturgy by doing things like finding them through you know, various books of Latter the Saints or, or, or in this case, the martyrology. And you, and you find that there are feasts, even though the stuff is not mentioned for the universal calendar. But today's feast is definitely a, an epiphany feast, if you will, because it's the feast actually of St. Balthasar. So the, the wise men, they're, they're, one of their feast days is today. And uh, it's interesting when you see that about the, the, the wise men and, you know, that their whole life after that journey to Bethlehem was spent in that service of that infant that they had seen. All the sacrifices they made up to that point to get to the infant, and then in turn from there on out, they continued to, to work and to sacrifice for him all their days long. Well, and and with that, we see that their feast days also take kind of that back seat promoting our Lord, first and foremost, before themselves. The wise men, they came. And they brought great gifts as part of their sacrifice. We talked about before, uh, you know, perhaps last year or two years ago, whatever it may be, about the distance that they had to cover and the terrain that they had to cross and things like that and how much of a sacrifice that was and how much time it, it truly took to get there. However, one doesn't really talk too much about the actual gifts that they gave to the child. They came forward the three kings, and they were of three different ages. The oldest of them was Melchior. And Melchior, he came forward, and he was the one that actually presented Our Lady with gold. And the purpose for the gift of the gold was that it stood for the reality of the Christ child. It was in recognition of his possession of the kingdom that he was truly a king himself, that he was not only just a king of a tribe like the Jewish people, but actually by their, those three kings giving that gift to him, that he was a king over all of mankind, that he was a king over all of the earth, and yea, even greater, the king of heaven and earth. And so as such, they, Melchior, the oldest, presents that gift representing the kingship of our Lord, his authority there. The next in line in age was Caspar. Caspar, he came forward next to present the gift, and he bore with him frankincense. He was the one that presented that gift to him, which we know to be the sap of that, uh, of that fragrant sap of the tree, that when hardened and then burned upon the but hot charcoal rises up as a very sweet odor out of that thurible. And that represents representing our prayers rising to heaven that our Lord finds so agreeable, like the odor itself, that he sniffs it and he can't help but be pleased by that, that fresh fragrance of prayers. And so the frankincense was the gift that actually represented the divinity of Christ. In, uh, in that regard. That was the symbolism behind the frankincense in that gift. And the, the second in line, Caspar in age, he gave that gift of frankincense. Then thirdly, the youngest of the three kings, by a handful of years, is Balthazar. And Balthazar, he comes forward and he brings the myrrh with him. This is the incense that's reserved for funerals. This is the incense that has a bitter tinge to it. And as such, that represented the humanity of Christ. Because it was in recognition that he was truly man, despite being truly God and that he would ultimately die. In fact, it was actually a part of a foreshadowing of the fact that this king uh, and God would sacrifice his own life for his people, the foretelling of the passion and death of the Christ child. 
And then after presenting their gifts, they adored him some more. They spent a little bit of time there until the angel told them to go back home via different routes, not going back to Herod. And they left that at that. They returned all the way back to Persia. They left behind that infant, but never with a doubt in their mind of exactly what they had seen. They'd seen the Christ child. They'd seen that Messiah, the promised one. They knew it was a great occurrence for them. They went back and they told their own people that they had charge over exactly what they had seen. And they held it in their hearts for so many years to come. Until finally, in the tradition kind of tells us in about the year around the, about the year 55 AD or so. Now they are very old men, and there comes to them another man, not quite as old as they, but that comes and preaches to them a gospel. His name is Thomas. He is one of the twelve. And all of a sudden it clicks into place for them. They realize in that moment that this is that same child they had beheld so many years before. And everything about him that they had heard had come to fruition. And the fact that he did indeed offer up his life for his people, and he did indeed rise from the dead, and he was truly God, proving it by his resurrection. And in fact, he's the one the true God that's meant to save all of mankind. And they listened to Thomas eagerly, and they knew him to, to be true. And the people that they had told about what they had seen, they embraced the faith too. And the, naturally, the leaders of these people was going to be these kings. And so what does Thomas do? But he lays hands upon them and ordains them to be priests and also to be bishops. And they live out the rest of their lives performing the divine services in honor of God. They go about preaching. They go about teaching. They go about saying Mass, giving the sacraments, and leading their people and the people wherever they might have influence and ability to go to, leading them towards back towards that Christ child. And they, with the, every Mass that they say, they're able to make that same act of adoration all over again that they had traveled so far away to that little cave on that faithful Epiphany Day. And with each time they make that adoration and fall down, they get to do something that they had never done during their time in the cave. They actually get to hold the Christ child now within their hands. And they get to now actually even greater they become the tabernacles for him by being able to receive him. And with so much of the things with the wise men, there are differing opinions towards it. Some traditions tell us that they ultimately died in their old age as martyrs. Some traditions tell us that they died peacefully. The, average, the age that they say that they about died at was Melchior was 116 years old. That Gaspar was 112 years old, and Balthazar was 109 years old, and that the day is the day that Balthazar actually had died. And while some of them do say that they were martyrs, the other ones say that Balthazar died, if he was to have died in peace, they say that he died immediately upon the completion of celebrating the sacrifice of the Mass. And so when we look at that, we see either way, whether they gave up their lives by a violent death for martyrdom, or whether they lived until the end of their old age, simply performing the divine services, preaching, mass, sacraments, all of those things. Regardless, we see a complete exhaustion of everything that they had to give in way sacrifice for that one child. Something that had begun so many years before, sacrificing their time, sacrificing their great efforts, sacrificing their comfort, sacrificing their own uh, kingdoms even, to ultimately get to see that child, sacrificing their wealth to give him gifts, sacrificing their positions as kings to become bishops, and ultimately either sacrificing the mass or even their own blood and lives 
in the end, giving every last bit of themselves for that little child. So, with that, as we celebrate Epiphany and the Mass, and we celebrate the Feast of St. Balthazar today, we remind ourselves just how important it is, every opportunity we have, to give a little bit of ourselves back to our Lord in whatever way he asks us to serve him, in whatever way he asks us to, to assist in the spread of his faith, in the spread of the, of the knowledge of the truth of the God-made man, that one more soul might see, that one more mass may be said, that one more bit of glory be given to him. Ours is usually not a complete and utter sacrifice of cells to the last drop of our blood, but knowing that every opportunity that comes our way is a sacrifice we should want to embrace ourselves because we bring ourselves ultimately by that just a little bit closer to that ability to behold our Lord forever in eternity. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.